morning, everybody. This is one of my favorite, favorite things about touring is looking at construction sites and watching all the progress. Of course, I know this causes incredible traffic jams, but I guess it's the little boy in me still. I love watching this stuff. I think it'd be really cool to own a giant construction company. There's a lot of unsung heroes in the world that go out there and build the infrastructure of all of our cities that we live in that go without being thanked. and. I, for one, am really grateful for the men and women that get out there and build the places where we live. It's cool coming to places like Quebec where Unibrew's at because now I'm becoming familiar with the country and the city up there, so I get to see all kinds of progress. Blue moon. Yes. Isn't there something in the news that uh, Blue Moon got sued by somebody because they had said they were Belgian brewed and it wasn't, it was actually Belgian styled? Any of you guys know about that? No, I'm not saying I like road construction, I'm saying I like construction. Road construction sometimes sucks. You know, it's, I think that kind of goes back when I was a kid, my big brother-in-law, Stan, um, Michelle's husband, he used to build little model railroad tracks like that stuff there and, and I used to love that. That was the coolest thing. What what little boy doesn't like a model train set growing up? Well I guess Dr. Evil probably didn't like that, but there you have it. He also likes bald cats. The beer will be in Peru soon. We we're talking to a distributor in Brazil actually. We have two distributors that are there that are trying to get us to work with them and uh, the company that distributes in France uh, it's at sign K-A-N-A-T-A-F-R Canata F-R those guys may have the rights
wants to distribute to South America, which means everybody on your continent would be able to order it. Chile, Peru, Argentina, Paraguay, Uruguay, Brazil, Ecuador, Colombia, all of the other countries there. Um, so many beautiful places that we've played over the years. Uh, Venezuela. Um, what else am I forgetting? I'm sure I'm forgetting something. Thanks, man. Enjoy work. Do your best. That's the thing too nowadays, man. People sometimes they don't they don't give their best. They just give enough, and I think that's what makes the difference between a guy that'll come home from battle and a guy that'll come home from battle with his friends and medals because he's gone the extra mile. My birthday was really good, thank you. I'm glad that I was able to share it with you guys. I've got the greatest fans in the world. You guys are so amazing. Mexico should be getting the beer soon too. One of our uh, friends, Jason Stein, has actually been talking to a distributor in Mexico. And again, like I said, uh, the people at Canata, or Canata, however they say it, FR in France, is possibly gonna have rights to distribute to the rest of the world besides North America. Boy, I talk about winning the lottery. One of the most desirable beers to find right now may have the rights to it. You too, my friend. You have a great day, too. One of the things I was just talking to Pam about the other day in California, in North Hollywood, where the northbound 101 merges onto the southbound 405. When I first met David Ellison, before I even met Pam, they were working on that off-ramp from the 101 onto the 405 and I believe that they are still working on that off ramp. Can you believe that? It just shows you how how sad uh, the politics are in California it comes down to taking care of the people. My state where I live in Tennessee just now, they just did I think probably 15 or 20 miles of freeway that they repaved at night uh, on the 65 and it's just mind-blowing because you get so used to just laziness and, and ineffective uh, road construction I don't know I think it all you know what they say rolls downhill it comes from a, a very weak and uh, ineffective governor and mayor senator Where are you at? I missed that. Sorry, I was looking at the road and thinking about how mad I was at that. My years living in California and freeway crap. I'm doing great. I don't know if Marty went. We didn't leave him any tickets or passes, but we talked to him. We know David Ellison talks to him more than, than I do. But we can we all still talk. Marty's a, a very talented guy. Exchange was interesting. A lot of people were griping that I went there, but just like me joining the Grammys uh, for the Nashville chapter, I went there to effect change. I'm going to uh, do my very best to get another category for the Grammy categories for metal. And we went down from multiple ones to just one now, and, and uh, I think that we deserve more than one, and, and that's one of the things I'm hoping. I've also joined the uh, advocacy group at the Grammys, which is uh, going to be uh, a group of us musicians who will be speaking to Congress about rights for musicians. And
do I miss the 80s? No, not really. I enjoyed it very much. A lot of people don't remember it, so that's why they miss it. There was a lot of times that you know were kind of tough. Being homeless was really a bummer, but um, I think it really made me um, tough when it comes down to being able to face some of the hardships that we go through. And it certainly made me understand a lot of our fans a lot more because you know, you can't really go much more downhill than, than being homeless and living in a car. So going all the way from living on the street and panhandling and begging for food to where I am now, I've lived just about every level of life financially and uh, I mean, not by any means stupid rich, but you know, at least I can put food on the table for my kids. And it makes me understand you guys way better um, so that no matter who it is, a, a young fan that's just starting out or somebody who has you know, had some hard luck and um, it's really easy to talk to them. We went to um, lunch the other day with Bob Chaparty, my friend from Concrete Marketing, and there was a man out in front of the place we went. I just went to a hot dog joint. It was called Papaya's. They've got really great hot dogs. and. I went there and, and uh, there was a guy in a wheelchair outside begging for money and, and I was looking at him and, and I didn't know if he was one of those professional beggars or if he really was um, broke and, and hungry. So I bought him some food and I took it out to him and I handed it to him and he looked at me and he said, thank you. And I said, no, thank you. And uh, God bless you. And, and I watched him have lunch with us. We sat uh, at the restaurant and, and it was really interesting to see um, just just to watch um, his demeanor change just to smile and to be happy and you know I know what it was like to be hungry it sucked so yeah if you can if, you know, if there's any way you can help somebody today yeah try and do that that's a great feeling it's like that old saying, the guy that was complaining about not having any shoes until he saw the man with no feet. I've always tried to help people. Can you guys hear me very well? Somebody was complaining the other day when I was periscoping in the plane. best way to tell if somebody's lying or not is to offer them food uh, or drink. Um, and uh, best thing to do with somebody who's homeless is if you can get them water with electrolytes in it, like, like Pedialyte, which is baby food. Um, it has electrolytes in it, which will help them They want money instead of food. That's an immediate indicator that they aren't hungry. I, I remember in the very beginning, I got my own um, experience would be when you see guys with signs saying they'll work for food, and then you say, "Okay, I have something to do," and everything that you say, they'll have an excuse like, "I have some yard work." Well, I have a bad back, I can't do anything like that, but I'll take money. Well, you know what, I have some clerical stuff you can do. Well, you know what, I'm allergic to the glue and the paper. Well, you know what, I have a, a job where I need you to just sit out in the front yard and be a sundial. Well, I'm allergic to the sun. You know, they, they those kind of people are, are the scammers. Um, the people that really, really are legit, you'll know, because if you offer them and they accept, there's your first indication. Um, so I always uh, try and help uh, when I can, if it's safe, and, and give food or drink, and uh, that's a good thing. You know, the other thing uh, we did was we invested in some soup kitchens, which we know for sure uh, feed people. There's a soup kitchen we own part of, and then uh, that's in TJ, Tijuana, Mexico, and then there's another one that we uh, set up with a wonderful ministry called Outside the Bowl down in Haiti, and I believe the last time I checked, we were feeding 3,500 people 
a day down there that was uh, orphans and widows every day in Haiti. So I'm, I'm pretty concerned with all of the hur hurricane action that's going through all of our southern states and the Caribbean. Um, but uh, um, I know that this is, uh, we're, we're going to persevere and we're going to make it through all this stuff. It's tough. It's really tough. Um, but I think this is, this is the time when you see everybody come together. The Grammys has a, a thing called Music Cares that we're doing where we're helping uh, musicians and artists that have lost uh, um, life, property, uh, instruments, work, housing, and stuff like that. We're, we're helping through Music Cares, which is our, our program through the Grammys. And um, I was uh, really honored to hear from Josh Maloney and Ed, Ed, Evan Rubinson at Dean Guitars. They sent a guitar to me to autograph to uh, uh, send back. They're going to donate it. And e even though it's going to only be a small amount of money um, for this enormous rebuilding process, uh, they uh, wanted to step up and, and donate something. So um, that's really good, too. I'm, I'm glad to see that we're able to do a small gesture like that. And I think um, it, if if we play Houston in the near future, it would be really great to just just do some free performances down there, just to get back to the city. I think that would be great. Yeah, Dave McRobb is awesome. I love Dave. Little little interesting uh, because he's Canadian and us being American, we have a, a really fun relationship. Um, not too rough. We don't we don't get too too rude with each other, but. Uh, um, we definitely have a really fun relationship. Dave always goes above and beyond. No, I'm not sleepy. I just woke up. My first cup of coffee, though, so... Yeah, it is pretty early still. So we're in uh, French Canada. So do I what? So do I what? Hey, what time is your journey? It is like five to nine. Yeah, it's uh, uh, almost yeah. nine p.m. Uh, nine a.m. in the morning here. So. Yeah, early, early, early. You guys want to see what the bus looks like? Let me get a quick tour real quick. Okay, so this is a lounge up front. And uh, so entertainment system. This is Kiko's guitar. I secretly go in there and play. Um, very evil songs on Kiko's guitar to make it mad. Just kidding. <laughs> and then here is all the condo bunks are for the bad guys. Usually you have uh, three of these on each side, not two. And we have usually 12 of them. Get smart doors. Another get smart door. And then the loose in here. And I'm up there. 
So that's the 25 cent tour. Actually, know a good monkey? Does anybody know a good monkey? <laughs> yeah, but not driving and riding in a bus is still kind of the same. You know, you're still in transport. I guess you have to come out here and hang with me for a little while, friend. It'd be fun. I don't, I don't know how long you'd like it, but uh, it'd be fun. It's funny whenever I have any guests or family or friends that that want to come out and tour with us, they'll. They'll come out here and the first day is like, yeah, man, this is so great. And then after a couple days, it's like, ma, ma. <laughs> yeah, this stuff will kick you by. Why do cars in the USA move slowly on the road? Um, clearly, you must be talking about where traffic is, because where I live, there's the pace of traffic's really good. Even in my shower, it's really good. Yeah, we're getting close. So where is everybody today? Tell me where you guys are all at. I didn't catch that. I forgot to ask you. Detroit. Dirk is sleeping. Anybody watch football this weekend? It's funny how, how football is losing its popularity right now with all of the politicizing that's going on on the field. Um, yeah, I was surprised. I saw the ratings and, and I thought, uh-oh, <laughs> the Browns stink. That's funny. You know, I was a big NFL fan, but I just I just don't care anymore. You know, it's because, I mean, with all of the end zone celebration and, and just, you know, all of the stuff that goes along with it that has nothing to do with football at all. You know, the, uh, the posses and the drugs and uh, domestic violence at home. It's just crazy. Uh, me being 55, I remember back when the guys had the crew cuts and, and you know, uh, the days of Johnny Unitas and Fran Tarkenton and, and Roman Gabriel and, and all those players, Joe Namath and Joe Montana. Wow, talk about really, really amazing, amazing players. Uh, Barry Sanders, uh, Emmett Smith, uh, one of my personal favorites, Jerry Rice. Um, Jerry Rice was one of the most amazing, classy players ever. And I remember when he went from the 49ers over to the uh, to the Raiders. I thought that was so great. But even I knew that that wasn't right because Jerry was a 49er. And, uh, you know, like I said, just the uh, epitome of grace. I, I remember him saying that he took ballet lessons so that he could uh, effectively fly through the air. And, and uh, if there was a Michael Jordan of football, it would have probably been Jerry Rice or vice versa. If there was a Jerry Rice in basketball, it would have been MJ. Yeah, I think so. I, I personally, um, I agree with the person right underneath you about hockey kicking ass. Hockey is my favorite sport uh, besides uh, MMA. You know, the, just watching mixed martial arts, seeing the different styles, seeing the different strengths and, and so on and so forth, it's, it's really amazing. I was, um, I'm still not sure how I feel about the McGregor Mayweather fight. I had heard that that fight was going to be thrown in the beginning, and, and I thought, no way my boy Connor would ever do anything like that. But, uh, 
regardless, I thought that it was great to watch you know this young talented fighter go from being a, a you know kid that was scrapping and in Ireland to being um, a household name in mixed martial art and, and uh, for that I, I'll always be a fan. Um, I picked Connor knowing that the pros all said that he was going to lose anyways because unlike a lot of people uh, I bet very foolishly I bet with emotion instead of picking teams that I know is going to win I'll pick a team that I like. I can't tell you how many times I picked the Raiders and they didn't win just because I love the Raiders and you know I would pick the the Raiders against their practice squad and I know that I would lose <laughs> but uh, I love the team I, I uh, always have them since I was a little kid playing Pop Warner and, and our team was the Costa Mesa Raiders and that was fun for me I'll, I'll always be a, a Raider fan Wow, that's a big tattoo joint. You gotta sign that for you gotta be good. We getting close? We are eight miles. Eight miles. That sounds like a name for a good movie. Did you see that movie? Yeah, well, someone was watching it last night. That's a good movie. You know, I, I didn't understand Eminem until I saw that movie and I thought that was a great movie. Did you guys see that movie? Any of this in eight mile? Yeah, you can't not be a Texan and love the Cowboys, you got to. You know, and the Texans are good too. I was really surprised, uh, especially especially impressed with J.J. Moss, what he did. Um, my hand is off to you, sir. It's a tremendous uh, uh, feat that you've done. And that's what I'm talking about. That's, that, you know, like B.K. Subban, the guy that had just joined the Predators in Nashville. Part of the reason so many people were sad with him leaving Montreal, besides the fact of him being such an amazing talent, was what he had done in the community. And immediately when he came to Nashville, he made his presence known by plugging in and helping our community there. And and I just think that's terrific. I'm looking forward to the next uh, wave of my career, being able to do more philanthropic work, helping out bands and stuff. In fact, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but... Uh, Justice, myself, and Danny Nozell, um, who has uh, CTK Management, um, had uh, we're forming a new management company called Thrashville, and uh, we'll be putting out a press statement soon that tells all of you about it. All the bands that are out there that are looking for management, we're uh, looking for bands, and we'll give you a post office box or an address you can send your music too if we're interested and you like what you see with us maybe we can enter into an agreement that we manage you we're basically looking for bands that are together that have a, a, all the pieces together a record a record deal full band a tour so on and so forth but we're also looking for bands that are you really have great talent that may just be starting you you may have a band that's together and you're just going out now but you, you know you're going to be huge like i did when i and Metallica, like I did when I started Megabeth. If you know for sure you're gonna you're gonna make it, send me your stuff or send it to Justice. Like I said, I'll post that information uh, somewhere either here or Facebook. Does that sound good to you guys? What do you think? Pretty cool, eh? It'd be nice to have a management company by musicians that. done a press statement yet because we're in the process of getting all the legal stuff done you know we don't want to have a name and 
and say, oh, here's the name of the company, and find out that somebody else, you know, has a company that does something really ridiculous, like making toilet seat covers and, and uh, some heavy metal band named after a toilet seat. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we're the iron toilet seat. Awesome. <laughs> Traffic is clearing up, isn't it? Okay, you know what? I gotta go get my glasses if I'm gonna speak up because when the phone's too close, I can't see it. Just give me a second here. Just gonna be looking at the floor for just one second. This is the best way for me to be able to talk to you because then you don't get these little guys with their fanzines putting in what they think they said, which was not what they said. It's a really easy way for me to dispel some of the crap that's spoken about me and some of those real horrible gossip metal sites that think they're helping, but they're doing nothing but hurting heavy metal in general. You know, the funny thing is the little douchebags that run those uh, websites would never say the stuff that they say to the bands that they put down. I don't mind. Everybody's got to have a place in the world. You got guys like that that volunteer to be the scum of the earth and none of us have to worry about that. Okay, Andre, take it easy, pal. guitar without glasses. Have you ever seen a picture of me playing guitar? Thank you. Thanks, bud. The New York Stock Exchange is actually great for us, for our companies, the beer company and the wine company, because I want to focus on making music, but this has been such a great opportunity. You know, it doesn't matter that I made it. I'm just glad that there's a fantastic beer company out there. And uh, it was... Uh, it's really, really fun to do this. I love the guys at Uniper. I love Jerry Feats. I love JY and Philippe and all the people at the company. It's really great. Nice feet. You like my shoes? They're John Barbados. I can take them off if you want. Go put on some construction boots. I don't know how Eddie's show's doing. I haven't seen him for a while. Thank you about that. Actually, uh, Take No Prisoners, the background vocals were turned off for the first couple of uh, background vocal lines from the boys, so I was a little frustrated. Say hi to your bus driver, I too have my class 1A in Canada. He said he doesn't care, no, just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I like John Barbados, it's, you know, it's kind of edgy, kind of punky. Reminds me of like if Scott Weiland and Johnny Rotten and, and I all did a clothing company, that it would be cool. 
Thanks, Chris. What do you guys got planned for the rest of the day? Let me know before I take off. Re-record Killing is my business. I don't know. We're we we're talking yesterday about the new record already, so I'm thinking we're gonna probably put that on hold. Um, we just remixed Killing, and, and uh, it's gonna be being released very soon. So that should be enough because I think that the new mix on it is really super aggressive. It's got all the new tones and all the great sounds and stuff that, that uh, are on the amps nowadays versus the stuff we used back then because the amps back then it was just an amp and a little pedal that's all we could afford. Alright, I don't understand how today is your Friday but that's great. But if you cannot type in, in uh, kanji or whatever, uh, katana, that would be great so that I can read what you're saying because I can't translate it fast enough. Why is it foggy now? Eh, we're up by the North Pole. Maybe that has something to do with it. Yeah, the beer's great, man. I, I, I don't want to say that uh, it's better than anybody else's beer, but it sure is good to me, man, I'll tell you. I used to drink Corona or Heineken's a lot, and now I can't drink either one of them. If it's a choice, uh, it's it's going to be uh, Corona because 
I just can't drink Heine anymore after having uh, two alone. It's just so much better. And uh, Heine's just it's so skunky to me now. Well, thanks, Miss Damius. Uh, I can't tell you where it's at. Listen, we're going to go. We're just pulling in to get some gas right now. So I love you guys, and I will talk to you later.